Hi, this is Robin Bremer, the author of the Kingdom Living series, <clears throat> the Kingdom Living Bible Study, and the Pocket Study Guides. And today, I am going to share with you how Jesus died to give you the blessing and to redeem you from the curse. Let me show you what I mean. In Genesis 3, 17, it says, then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and eaten from the tree for which I command you not say, to eat of, he says, Cursed is the ground for your sake. In other words, God didn't curse the ground. Adam cursed the ground. The ground, it said, Cursed is the ground for your sake. Not God cursed the ground, okay? Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field in sweat, in sweat of your face. You shall eat bread. So, the curse was, we were no, because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and choose to eat from the knowledge of good and evil, they are now experiencing evil. They, were, they experienced good, but now they're experiencing evil because they choose to to want to have the knowledge of it. They ate the fruit of the knowledge of evil. So now they're having knowledge of evil. They're experiencing evil. And that means that uh, in the garden, God gave us gold and told us where it was. He gave us uh, all the fruit would yield seed, which would e yield fruit in the garden God made for us. Everything was given to us in the ga garden of Eden. Everything was provided for us. We had everything we had need of in the garden. But when Adam and Eve sinned, the ground was cursed because of, of them. Uh, so because of that curse, men now had to work for their living. We no longer live for our assignment. We live just to survive. Okay, the, There's two kingdoms in this world. There's the kingdom of darkness, which came as the result of the fall of man. And then there's the kingdom of God. And God said, when we're born again, he took us out of the kingdom of darkness and put, him into the, put us into the, his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the son of love. Okay, so there's two different kingdoms there. And right there is where we went, translated into the kingdom of darkness. And Satan runs this world system. That's why there's never enough. You're always grabbing to get more, trying to get ahead, working harder. For example, if I said, um, if you didn't get your mortgage paid off by this time next year um, your whole family is going to have to go to jail until you can pay it off or something like that you would work harder you would get more jobs make your kids work make your husband wife work everybody would go to work and you'd sell everything you'd have you'd pawn it and you do everything you could to pay off uh, everything that you owned on the house but you would do it with increased toil and that is a result of the world system. So, let's take you to, that was Genesis 3.17. Let's go to Galatians. Uh, let's first go to, yeah, let's go to Genesis, I mean, um, Galatians 3.13. It says, uh, Galatians 3.13 says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, for curses everyone that hangeth on the tree, so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon the Gentiles, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And why do we need the promise of the Holy Spirit? Because in the Old Testament, we were led by, we were tutored by, we were taught the, by the law, saying, okay, these are the rules you're supposed to follow. Nobody can follow them. You can't be good enough. You need a Savior. Now the Savior has come, and so now we're no longer led by the tutor of the old law. Now we are led by the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, our comforter, our come beside us, our helper. Okay? So... That's why he took us from the curse of toiling and, and following the law to having the law of God written in our heart, the law of faith, the law of life of spirit, the law of liberty, uh, the law of uh, love, and the law of reaping and sowing, the law of um, agreement and binding and loosening on the earth the keys to the kingdom. And that's what's in our heart, and the Holy Spirit is going to lead us in the new covenant. So, Jesus actually died to take us back to no more toil. That was the end result. You see, 
Well, when we got the knowledge of good and evil, then we began to experience evil, to walk in evil, to have to live through this world's evil system. And we could no longer have communion and fellowship with God. It was a strain. The Old Testament prophets are the only ones that really heard from God, and then he had to turn around and talk to the, the people, where now the Holy Spirit talks to us through his Son, through the Holy Spirit. God talks to us through the Holy Spirit instead of through everybody else or certain one or two or three people, Pope or whatever. He talks to us because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Okay, so now that we have the new covenant, we're also redeemed. God wanted to redeem us from toiling. He, You see, when somebody says, that's my God, God supplies all of your needs, desires, wants. God is the ultimate thing that you get everything from, your resources from, everything from. And God wanted to be our God again instead of us being our God. In the Old Testament, we were our own God. We would uh, toil and work to feed ourselves. We would uh, follow certain laws and say, Yeah, I followed that law. I followed that rule. Yeah, I followed the Ten Commandments. I did it really good. You know, you can brag about it. The New Covenant, nobody can brag because it's not about following the rules. It's about having a whole new spirit in you and being led by the Holy Spirit. And when you're led by the Holy Spirit and you pray in the Spirit, the Bible says you're praying mysteries. Your spirit is praying mysteries through the Holy Spirit, and He's revealing revelations to you on what seeds to sow in order to have a harvest that you need in certain areas. So it's about sowing and reaping, not toiling and God redeemed us from that curse so I'm not saying don't work I'm saying until you get a hold of the principles of no more toil and of the blessing and of the Sabbath day rest which is not Sunday by the way uh, then you know work and get hold of the principles and then uh, as you walk in it you'll become more fruitful and these are things that I'm just really beginning to understand and apply to my life and um, I'll soon be sharing some stories. Excuse me. Now if you look at Proverbs 10.20. 10.20. It says, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he has no sorrow to it. That is the covenant. Now the blessing is our covenant, and he has no toil to it. He has no... You don't have to go out and get a job. You don't have to work. There's no toil. There's, it, it's, it's sweatless. Okay, the blessing is sweatless. It's about sowing and reaping. Then let's go to, if you don't still agree with me or understand about the blessing, let's go to an example. This is a really, 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 really good high opening example. And it is Genesis 39, 6. Genesis 39, 6. My Bible's pretty well trained. It opens up pretty close to a right on the page I wanted to go to. Okay, Proverbs 39, 6. It says, The Lord, okay, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord, did you catch that? Not the bless, not the blessings, it says the blessing. It's a covenant. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread he ate. In other words, he had no care about anything because he saw that whatever Joseph did, it prospered because the blessing was on it. So the blessing of the Lord was on, uh, was on this uh, Potiphar's house. Was it Potiphar? Whoever it was that Joseph was working for. Yeah, Potiphar's house. Um, the blessing, the covenant the, the blessing is our covenant. Our covenant is for God to be God, to Him to provide everything for us. And He already provided everything we need for life and godliness. It's already there. Now, how you get it is through the revelation of the Holy Spirit of sowing and reaping. Uh, as far as the finances go, sowing and reaping, uh, God already provided health, healing. You sow words, you agree with God to receive the healing and receive what He has. So that's Genesis 39.6. That's an awesome eye-opening scripture. So just sort of summarize, uh, in Genesis 3.17, Adam brought a curse on the earth which caused him, mankind, to always have to work and toil and sweat 
in order to live. So we're always running after trying to survive. And the Word of God says that seek first the kingdom of God and all these things, things will be added to you. And that doesn't mean seek first after the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean go to church and do this and do that and do this and do this and do that and do this and more of this and more prayer and more fasting. Uh, that doesn't mean do it. That doesn't mean do more things for God and then these things will be added to you. What it means is seek first the kingdom of God. Seek how does the king and kingdom operate? Um, what are the kingdom laws? How do you get things from the kingdom? Okay. And then we went to Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ, yes, redeemed us from the curse of the law. So that, so that, the blessing of Abraham would come upon us. And that we would receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Because you need the promise of the Holy, you need the Holy Spirit and the blessing because in order to get the blessing you need to have direction by the holy spirit then we went to proverbs ten twenty that says the blessing the blessing of the lord maketh rich and adds no toil to it no work no increased labor okay then we looked at the sample example in genesis 39 6 that talks about how the blessing of the lord was on all that joseph did so when he took over Potomir's house, it, it translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God and prospered. So I'm going to be teaching on the kingdom. My books are on the kingdom. Get my books in Amazon.com or get them on my website, uh, which is through Amazon. I'm going to soon be making MP3s and audiobooks out of them. They will teach you about the kingdom. They will teach you about your king and to walk in power and God's presence and supernatural, uh, supernatural experiences. The new covenant is all about the supernatural things of God because it's all about the Holy Spirit and the blessing and how God wants to give you more than enough overflow, abundance, etc., extravagantness in every area of, of life like it is in, on earth, like it is in heaven. So my name is Robin Bremer. Uh, I hope that I got you excited. Like I said, subscribe to me if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on my blog, make sure you uh, check out some of my free resources over on the right side. This is my right side. I don't know which side it is for you. Uh, I have some of my free eBooks, and you can also sign up for getting my Kingdom newsletter or free Ace, which is an appetite suppressant and energy pill which makes you lose weight really fast with no toil no toil hey it's sort of like a blessing um no exercise and no changing your diet no it's my no toil diet pill and i lost uh, four dress sizes and 21 pounds in um actually i lost 21 pounds in three weeks and then three more weeks i lost four dress sizes so my blessing pill no more increased toil um ace it's on the other side just fill out the form and i'll send you one i'm out right now but i'm expecting them in next week and i'll send you out a free sample um and check it out talk to you tomorrow